Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of New York State Music in Motion, sponsored by the Friendly Help and Salve. You can go to thefriendlyhelpandsalve.com. Natural hemp seed oil, good for topicals and treatments. I'm your host, Frank Palangi, nysmusic.com. What's going on, everybody? We have Rob from Dopapod in the building. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Rob the man. What's been happening? Nothing, man. Uh, I'm up in Vermont where I live, which is a good place to be right now. So, yeah. Yeah. How, uh, we're in Vermont. I'm um, maybe like an hour from Rutland. Oh, cool. I'm in Burlington. Okay. So you're up there a little more. Yeah. About you know. two and a half. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a good place to be right now, and apparently it is for everybody else, too, because it's, you know, everybody's, like, buying houses and moving up here without even seeing houses. Yeah, yeah, the market's going crazy. <laughs> I know, it's wild, yeah. I got our house for sale here. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Trying. Well, you shouldn't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is there's no place to go. It's too expensive, so it's kind of like uh, we'd sell it, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But. So what uh what's that amp you got be, uh, behind there? Oh, this is a uh, an old Vibrolux Fender Vibrolux. Okay. From the seventies. Um, it's a seventy-eight. Is that one and speaker or two? It's got two. It's got two tens in it. Okay, uh, nice. And uh, I've had it since like college. I got it when I was like eighteen or nineteen. I've, it's kind of been around ever since. Um, and yeah it, it, it's had a bunch of stuff done to it that i didn't do to it it's like uh when i bought it, it came with this big sheet of all these mods that have been done to it like it had been black faced and everything and, oh okay okay do you use that live too or just studio uh right now it's like i have another amp that i would use in dopapod that's not around right now it's in our trailer which is like in colorado so i can't get to it oh wow yeah and that's a fuchs amp which is a really great like you know, channel switching amp is a lot more powerful than this one, but this is what's around right now. So I gig with it. I record with it, teach with it. I pretty much do everything on it right now. And, nice. So you teach guitar lessons too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I do the same thing. That's kind I of like, the main, that's all I'm doing. You know, that's basically everything right now, you know? Yeah. Not, everything not moved on online. There are some in Vermont, but not too many. So most of the time I'm just teaching lessons. Yeah. Yeah. You do them all online now or? basically like even if they're in burlington i'm usually like yeah we got to do it online yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's it's tough it's tough it's some people i lost a few students because they didn't want to do it online they they learn better in person and i go it's nothing we can do about it man you know yeah yeah so, when when they're if they're like just starting playing guitar if they're like totally new to it i, that's, I yeah i'm kind of like yeah you don't want to do online lessons man you know um so yeah i've had to i've had to turn a few people away just because i i know i wouldn't have learned too well if i if my first couple of guitar lessons were over the internet had that been a thing in like 1999 i probably would have yeah been, i've been like i'm out of here you see know? mine's the opposite I've, I've been teaching kids that um just bought a guitar and they don't know anything so they're they're really really basic yeah i i kind of i know what you mean though it's a, it's a little it's a little more tough I mean, but, um, you must be you must be an amazing teacher if if you can do that. Like, because I I know even if you, even if we were in person, that teaching teaching people who are pretty new to the instruments, not my, I don't feel as confident in that as. Oh really? Then yeah, okay. as teaching like somebody who's like been playing a long time and maybe just wants a different point of view or something from another player. Or yeah, yeah. Um, I used to do it a lot. I used to like do nothing but teach kids, and then it kind of has ended up that a lot of kids don't even like the people that do hit me up are usually fans of the band. So they're, they're older, you know, yeah. like at least college yep. or high school. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now you guys been around for 10 years and you met Ber at Berkeley or did you all go to Berkeley? Yeah, we all went there. Uh, well, we didn't all go together. We didn't know each other before that. Okay. But, um, yeah, we, uh, that was the band started in 2008. So 12 years. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we all met when we were there. So nice. How did that happen? Is it like a class or on campus or something or it's actually playing on a sidewalk? <laughs> well, you know, we all met, met each other and at different times, you know? Okay. Um, so the other guys would have other stories about meeting each other, but my story about meeting our keyboard player is kind of neat, but maybe also like a little, like, um, uh, I don't necessarily want to like make this an example for everybody to live by. Cause 
it shouldn't have gone well, but it did. Oh, was okay. that I was in Berkeley and I, I was in this like really advanced ensemble that was like a lot of hard work. Like every week, the teacher basically just handed us like Mahavishnu orchestra songs and was like, learn it next week. Wow. And, and I didn't even listen to Mahavishnu orchestra and had no urge to at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I was just like, I don't know. I was just kind of, you know, you're 19 and kind of like, I think I, I was already a little burnt out with academics. And so I was like, man, I don't have it in me to do this ensemble. I'm going to pick like the easiest ensemble I can find. <laughs> and so I dropped it and picked up a reggae ensemble, which wasn't that easy. It's hard oh, okay. for totally different reasons. Okay. Um, and in that ensemble, because of me being too lazy to learn Mahavishnu orchestra songs, that's where I met our keyboardist, Eli. Was oh, okay. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. What about the other guys? Uh, well, I know Eli and Chuck, our bass player, who's actually in Vermont right now, funny enough, he's visiting his, with his wife. Um, they, like, they had met like in high school doing a five-week program at Berkeley. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, they played a little bit, I think then, and then, you know, a year or two later, they ran into each other on the street. And I think Eli didn't recognize Chuck cause Chuck had like lost a ton of weight. He, he looked like a totally different person the next time. Oh, okay. he so then they ran into each other again there. And to be honest, I don't know how Fro, our drummer knows anybody. He <laughs> just, everybody's always known him. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, like the drummer to go to in the area. Everybody knows. Remember that yeah, drummer? He's just yeah, just character, you know. So, yeah, yeah. They usually are. Drummers are the ones that because they almost have to. You think about it. They rely on other people, so they they gotta be. They gotta be all over. Yeah, a lot of them do. But Neil's really like understands harmony and plays like a lot of instruments aside from that, and like writes music too. So okay, so that's different. So he's actually like, he's not the typical. I'm sure if he needed to play a solo gig, he would find some way to do it. Like, okay. like he'd, he'd like make a bunch of stuff in Ableton and just jam along to it. Yeah. Or something. Tracks or, and all that. Yeah. Or just show up with a bass for some reason and be like, be really good at bass, you know, <laughs> <Out of nowhere. laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, that's cool though. Does he ever, uh, do you guys ever switch instruments live? Like, do you ever hop on anything else? We have, I'm trying to think, um, I don't really play anything else that well. I love playing bass, like, but that's not a big switch. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I, we've definitely done that before. And we actually, we do have a song actually, now that I think about it, we have a song called Starfish. That's kind of a more recent one where uh, aside from really just me and Neil or me and Chuck kind of switch. But ironically, we don't switch to each other's instruments. I grab Chuck's bass, and then Chuck goes over to Eli's keyboard rig and plays with synthesizers. Oh, okay. So it's still, um, okay. It kind that of still just, works. I think it honestly began that way because it sort of just didn't need a guitar part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and Chuck was like, you want to play bass? And I was like, yeah, I love playing bass. Like, give me it. So. I noticed that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of instrumental work live. There's a lot of keys. There's a lot of the synth stuff going on too and then yeah. um what i was surprised so it's you guys are like funk your jazz electronica how would you how would you describe it i read it in your bio and i mean i have my thoughts but i always ask well, you guys i don't even know what the bio says <laughs> <laughs> so whatever that says like it says know. hardcore like death metal it's really what it says on the on the well, website Maybe that's not even necessarily what we sound like, but if you want to just talk about what we all grew up listening to, sure. Then for sure. Okay. Um, because Chuck and ne like Neil's a metalhead, like, um, that's, and like Chuck grew up listening to like punk and Primus. Um, okay. They they never even like heard of jam bands or anything like that. I mean, I'm I'm um I'm comfortable being called a jam band. I'm fine with it. Like. I, I some people have a weird stigma about it but um it is because we gonna... and we're a band I also yeah. think, I get it because there's a stigma that comes with it where everybody like assumes what that means the second they hear those two words combined and they it think, isn't necessarily oh, that yeah, or they, yeah think, they think um, we're too lazy to write real songs and then they don't yeah or the music's boring or something you know they yeah. I don't know yeah yeah uh, but you vary it up enough it. where it's not it's not the same you know every every not. time yeah 
Well, what what I seen is uh, you getting into like an '80s metal guitar solo in between like this funk beat live. Oh wow, um, that yeah, I don't really listen to any '80s metal stuff. But that's what it sounded like. It was really? awesome. Maybe I was like, <laughs> "Whoa!" Must have just been in the moment. Um, well, I seen you did it twice. You did it two videos. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, maybe the same song. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, I don't. I don't have much of that influence at all. Like I. I mean, far and away, my favorite guitar player, like as a kid, was David Gilmour. Okay. Who certainly isn't really the shredder thing. Um, but I like like kind of guys who have a lot of chops too. Like Jimmy Herring is a favorite, and I was a big Fish fan and still am. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking more the you know like the slash guitar playing, not so much like the uh, you know I'm talking about speed metal. Oh but, yeah, but the, I never the listened sound, to that either. The yeah, sound I, of that, yeah, you definitely never, had that. Yeah, it comes out yeah, of you. Cool. I I, uh, yeah. I never own any Guns N' Roses albums or anything. I remember one time in the van on the way to some gig, Neil showed me uh, Rust in Peace by Megadeth for yes. the first time. Yes. And I, I had no, you know, I didn't know anything about it, and I was, like, floored. I have that signed by Dave Mustaine on the wall, oh, cool. or on this wall over here. Yeah. Nice. That might be the extent of any, of any like, any, you know, that era of guitar playing that I have any influence, you know, from. Man, but, it's yeah, good. Thanks. You're going to listen to 80s Megadeth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Me, Metallica. It's it's hard hard to pick, you know, but I, I do like Metallica a little bit more. But Megadeth, I tell you, there's more melody in Megadeth. And there's, That's what I like about and it. And I, I don't raw. care for Metallica very much at all. But, um, yeah, Megadeth and, and Marty Friedman. I know they had oh. like a million guitar players, but Marty Friedman kind of reminded me of if like Django Reinhardt got his hands on a – Ibanez in a Marshall stack or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And apparently he, he is like, he doesn't know any conventional harmony or anything. He kind of just like invents patterns that he likes the sound of. He does. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I emailed him about playing guitar on a song and um, he's, he's interesting. He does. He doesn't really take the solicited kind of requests and stuff. And I, I don't really, I've heard he's, I don't know if he's really picky or something, but mm -hmm. his, his style is, is, is pretty, but yeah, I, he's a great guitar player. That's why I reached out to him. I was like, dude, we got to do something. So. Oh yeah. Have you, <laughs> there's this really cool old video of like him and Jason Becker, like, like just kind of like <laughs> getting together backstage in the eighties. Do you ever listen yeah. to Jason Becker too? Yeah. Um, and that's really cool to see. Can you they're imagine all the on film stuff from the eighties? People just sitting there. You know, yeah. imagine the people because a lot of that wasn't filmed back then. A little bit. Oh, but yeah. We didn't have ever. the cameras and the cell phones like today. So if it was filmed, it was never intended to be seen. Probably no, you know? no. And they're like, why? Why is that out there? You know? Yeah, yeah. So you guys, you have seven albums. Uh is that right? That's yeah. what I read again. <laughs> the bio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me think here. Me... I checked Spotify. I think you have more than that. I think you have nine. Well, there's some live ones on there too. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. the core seven we got over the course of twelve years. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maybe with was, another one that's almost finished right now too. Okay. Maybe it was ten years from the album that you guys counted. Maybe it was the first two years. Did you that not re release? Be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still getting so, our we're still getting on our, our sea legs, you know. Okay. So yeah. how did the first record come about? And um was it self? distribution or how did, how did oh, it come they about? all have been they um we getting a record deal has never even crossed our minds okay do you Maybe, but do you I like two hearing some talks about it recently before quarantine that we were gonna maybe go in that direction but i don't know whatever even came of it but um um but yeah it was all we just put it out ourselves the first one like i think every single one of them is just like we never had like a budget or an advance we would just like we'd budget away our own money from touring yeah um and then just sell them over the internet and at shows you know um but the first one was um i guess i i want to say that really it just like this probably happens with every band you get to a point where like you you're getting your music together and everything and you you're young, you know, we were probably like 21 and we couldn't yep. figure out why people wouldn't come to shows, you know? 
just playing uh, around Boston. You know, we were yeah, playing house yeah. parties and stuff. And we would play these house parties and like there'd be a ton of people there by accident, you know, and because there was like beer and they're probably there for that. And, yeah. And the, the Buffalo like, that was chicken great. Dip. We showed them this time and then we'd book a bar show in Boston and nobody would come. And we'd be like, why didn't they come? And it's because they got drunk and woke up and didn't remember the name of the band they saw. <laughs> if they remembered seeing us at all. Yeah, so yeah, we were like, yeah. well, we need something to give to them, you know? So we started off like making like, just like, a, I think really little like live compilation CDs and like a little paper sleeve. Yep. Stick. Burn them. Yeah. And then eventually we're like, we got to make an album. If we're going to like, we got to give them something that looks real that they can like take home with them so that they know we're not like, so that they know that this, that this isn't just like the dudes who live in the house having a jam session. And then we're yeah. like, oh, band. yeah, it's the house band. So honestly, it was like, kind of like it, like, I don't think we had any aspirations of anything that big. It, it's like most of, almost everything we've done has been based on short term goals. You know, like we're like, mm -hmm. we need to make an album so that we can like, when the next time people come to a house party, they'll remember us the next day. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. So it's not like a bigger thing of like, you know, we want this to, uh, you know. It got there eventually, which, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. which was actually when it got less fun was when we were concerned with things we didn't even have yet. You know? Yeah. I've heard about that too, where some bands, yeah. they reach that point where you've been reaching the point that you've been wanting to for 10 or 20 years, whatever it is. And it's like, uh, is it uh, the legal stuff? Is it is it the, uh, you know, almost like um, the pressure of delivering something now? You know, that sort of thing? Um, it's a few things. Uh, I do think, yeah, in some ways there's like, there's more logistics and like playing bigger rooms is great because it's like, you know, we would have this great lighting rig and be on this nice big stage and it'd be like, look, mom and dad, we're doing great, you know? Um, yeah. But, but it, it didn't have like the sort of, um, you know, um, adventure feel of early days of touring when we'd load into like a stinky bar and just set up and play and <laughs> it was just the four of us. And yeah. at first it's just the four of us or at one point there was five of us in the band and, and we just, pile into a car with like one person in the trunk yeah you don't have to worry about a 4k video crew i, I seen that yeah we had a bunch yeah. of that stuff and yeah. and um and you know then before you know it, you're in a van with you know there's nine of you and half his crew and um but that was still fun too it was cool to put on like a big rock show i, I honestly think most of it was just mental like you know um you get to this cool place that you've wanted your band to be and um but getting there makes you kind of like greedy for the next level. So by the time you're yeah. there, you, you're not, you don't even enjoy what you thought you wanted because you want something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe so we that, can push yeah. this forward more. You know, you think about that. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, it, it would get there eventually. And, um, and we kind of, I think we, we got pretty good at keeping it fun again up until like quarantine happened and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's a normal thing with every band. I remember hearing the story uh, about David Gilmore on when Pink Floyd did the Animals tour, which is like at that point, like you ba a band doesn't get any bigger than that. That's it. Yeah. Like playing on the moon would be the only thing that you could do. That's yeah. Bigger. They were and like the Beatles. Huge. Yeah. And he was in like massive, he got like super depressed because there was just like no point to him. He was like, why, what are we even doing? Like. Like there's yeah. no higher than this, you know what I mean? There's no, uh, there's no so where you know you once you reach the ceiling, what's left? Yeah, which I can't really relate to that, but the I floor. But, <laughs> yeah, I can't really relate to what that feels like, but but I still was like, wow, so it never ends, does it? You know? Um, yeah. I think so. I think like in my mind is maybe you reach a certain point, and I think pass sort of, and it bran instead of like you know the ceiling and the floor thing, it's branches. You know what yeah. I mean? And if you, th I think if you think that way, it's a little less depressing of, you know, if I do make it here, it's, it, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, there is. There's left and right, you know, yeah. not just up and down. The, the, the worrying about where to make a thing is a very young man's game, you know? Yeah. Eventually you just get too old to like, we're like, man, I don't have time to be upset about that, you know? Yeah. I don't um, think I'm there yet. Quite. I'm kind of <laughs> yeah, in the middle. Same. Yeah. Same. You know, we all have our good days and bad days, yeah. but 
but yeah, I mean, mostly I'm just happy to like, you know, I'm just thrilled to have a band at all. I feel lucky. Um, you you play some big festivals too, if you want to talk about some of those. Uh, sure. Um, any specifically or? Um, let's say the most memorable or like you said, the most fun. Let's go with that. Oh, the most fun. Yeah. That's hard to say, but the most, the most memorable for me was definitely like, um, in 2015, we played Bonnaroo, and that was the biggest crowd we, we played for, for sure. Was that like the ah moment of, you know, this is something else, that sort of um, thing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like just like where you're like, man, that, you know, we're really lucky. Not everybody gets Surreal. to do this. Um, yeah. So and that was great, man. That was really cool. Um, uh, and, um, man, a lot of the other ones are a blur, but one of my – one of my favorites just year after year was Peach Fest in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, we would just always, I don't know why, but we would play well there. Like, do you mm -hmm. ever have this experience where you play kind of the same, if you go back to a venue five times, you have kind of the same show there every time for some reason? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes that's a bad thing. And sometimes you play great, no matter where the room, no matter, you know, what time it is. Cause it's the same place, same yep. energy. Sometimes you're nervous every time too, or something like that. Which can be like, a good thing. Cause I think yeah. being nervous just means you're excited and you have energy. Um, yeah. As long as you're yeah. prepared, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, that festival peach fest, we always had a great time at that one. And they always had, I would always like stay for the whole weekend. Cause the other bands on the bill were just awesome. Every time it was always like my favorite music. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. Do you wear so, uh, Oh, go ahead. Well, I mean, I mean it's, those are the only two that come out to come to mind. I mean, there's a lot of them that are just like they they blur together so much after a while. Like they're they all just kind of feel like one big festival. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to differentiate. Yeah. yeah. Do you wear uh, in ears or do you do monitors? What do you like? In ears. Yeah. In ears. Well, with Dopapod, yeah. I mean, I if I'm doing a you know if I'm playing a, like a solo smaller gig. gig up in Vermont, like I'm not going to be that guy. <laughs> In ear yeah. monitors, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but with Dopapod, yeah, we all did in ears eventually. I was the last guy to take the plunge. I resisted for as long as I could. Yeah, that's me. And then I finally got them, and and I'm glad I did. I I, I definitely enjoy it. They're good. Um, it's nice too because when I have them in, I can like that Fuchs amp that I mentioned earlier is really loud. It's like 50, it's not that loud, but it's 50 Watts louder than this. That's for sure. So, so you can turn your guitar down in your no, mix. No, I actually you turn, I, I turn it up, but I turn the cabinet backwards so that I don't blow people away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. But I can, is it open really, back or closed? It's open back. So I can okay. hear a little bit even without the in-ears in, but, yep. but it doesn't make a difference to me. And I don't crank it. It's not like I put it on 10, just like a little bit more where, where the mid range kind of comes to life a little more. Yeah. You know? Do you do the nineties thing where you mic the back of it too? No. No. Oh, I love no, I've that. I've seen people do that. What what does it do to the sound? It's Maybe awesome. like less, less high end comes out of it or something. Oh yeah, there's no like no high end. It's all mid range, that muddy range. But Whoa. if you add in, I would say twenty percent out of a hundred, twenty five percent, it makes it just a little more thicker. And for rock, it it um it adds this. I don't that feeling that you get with like Rage Against the Machine or the Pearl Jams or the um, uh, Stone Temple Pilots. They did that cool. for all those records. Wow. That's how they got the sound. Yeah. Because I love those tones. Um, it's just a 57 thrown back in the, in the amp. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, you know what I did? If we're going to get into the gear world, I, yeah. towards the end, well, not the end, but towards the last sort of, you know, run of shows that we were doing before everything happened. I was using this, but plugging it into a 212 cabinet. Okay. Um, a fender? That was, well, I could do, in the boat, there's, a, there's an output for an extension cab. But I can also keep these speakers running at the same time. So I mic'd these because they're 10-inch speakers and then put a mic on the 212 cab too. Yeah, yeah. And then did a blend with that. And I was using a Strat, so I had like, it was very, very sparkly and a lot of high end. So my tone knob was on like five the entire time and it was still pretty bright. <laughs> wow. I really liked that sound. I was, I thought that was a cool one too. Um, yeah. It's nice to experiment, you know. Try I use a lot of pedals too, right? I don't use a ton. Um, a ton? Uh, I mean, I have mine down here, which is just 
the one I have right now that's sort of my at home board is it's literally a cutting board that I bought at Ace Hardware. Oh, and, okay. Threw everything yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, well, there's some, you know, there's some broccoli I'm cutting up and some carrots, but never mind. That was a joke. But <laughs> no, I just have, I, I, on this one, I have like two overdrives. This is really what's on all of them. There's only like a couple things missing on this one from the bigger one with Dovapod, but it's two overdrives two delays like one that's like an analog simple one and then one where i can have presets yep and then i have like a phaser and a tremolo and that's pretty much it okay um so sometimes i'll use a whammy pedal too um oh, okay. okay i don't like to i can yeah. I feel like it really does something weird to the sound yeah um so if I, there's, there's one song in the set where it was like written with a whammy, like it kind of the part needs the whammy to even sound to play like it, the song. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so you got to get forced to. The Tom conundrum. Yeah. And um, so if I need it, I'll leave it on stage and I'll plug it in for that one song and then unplug it the rest of the night. A lot yeah, of yeah. Sometimes I get carried away and I'm like, I'm just going to leave it plugged in and have fun with it tonight. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm a big fan of chorus. Um, I have a chorus pedal that, like for the clean parts and stuff. So see, I love that eighties chorus tone from like Def Leppard and oh, nice. even Metallica used a lot of that and Megadeth, but um, yeah. Ozzy, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm just kind of that and um, like an octave pedal on low, just oh. so that when I hit the E's and stuff like that, it feels like, cause I'm, I'm only one guitarist too. Yeah. It feels yeah. You know, like a big, so, but I, I really hammer on the, you know, that I play in drop C so it's kind of, it adds that little extra. It's like a lowness to the low. Yeah, oh, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. You know what else I've been messing, I bought a freeze pedal recently. Do you ever yeah, use one of those? No, I've never heard of that. It's an electro harmonics pedal where like, whatever you play, if you just hit a chord, it just it, like freezes the sound of the chord so that you can improvise on top of it. Um, mm. So it's like, something, it just keeps it going. Yeah, it, it, but it's it's a little more angelic than that it's like because it doesn't really doesn't take overdrive very well so when i use it i'm kind of playing quietly usually. okay clean stuff um i guess you could do that but i feel like it doesn't track overdriven sounds very well but that thing's really fun because i i i kind of have um if i'm playing up by myself especially like i tried to do like the looping thing where i would like just make a riff yeah it doesn't... But I, I would get kind of bored with it because whatever you put into it you're stuck in that key and in that groove until yep. you turn the pedal off. Yep. And I like the freeze because the, I like to play around with harmony and modulate and come up with different. Like I, I like the idea of being able to, to go in any direction harmonically that I want if I'm just making stuff up. So with that, I can, I, I you know, I can, I can. Do you know where you're going? Like alive when you do um, all the, because you take sections, I know. So you have a solo a keyboard guy does and that kind of stuff. Is that um? Do you prep beforehand or do you like, I'm just going to play around the key and the effects this way tonight or that way? No, tonight? we don't, we don't, we consciously don't really talk about it. Um, the only time we do talk about it if, is if it seems like just via playing night after night, if it's starting to become the same thing every time. Yeah. You're know, like, we need to do something else. Yeah. Just like, yeah. It won't even be that specific. We'll, we'll, we'll just kind of like, we'll just be like do anything to make it different than the last couple of nights you yeah know? um i can imagine it feels the same to you guys but the audience is like you know it doesn't probably doesn't feel that way as much it could go sometimes it's the opposite of that where we oh, think okay. it was like you know we think we're like wow we've never played it like that before that was amazing and then everyone will be like that's kind of eh. <laughs> you know? So Man. it could go either way. It's kind and of you guys, funny when you're in the band, you don't, you like, you know, the least about whether or not what you're doing is good out of anybody. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's hard to tell sometimes you guys yeah. both sing at the same time too, which is different. Uh, yeah. You know, I think there's, there's a lot of, uh, that's very deliberate because both of us are like, are not like singers per se, you know, like we can't, we are musicians who can sing. Yeah. So I feel like kind of like we, like neither of us are great enough singers on our own. We're like, we're like, um, we, the, front, the front man thing. Yeah, you know we're I mean? like, yeah, yeah. like it kind of just like we're we kind of have the agreement that between the two of us, it sounds pretty good. 
you know, you know? yeah yeah I know you like yeah like he's got the low stuff covered I have I can sing pretty high but I have like I'm useless in the lower register so then like in like I guess the theory is in in but between the two of us we make a one pretty good singer you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean yeah yeah Sometimes, what do you think of the harmony pedals and stuff like that? Do you use that to add like three or four other voices or that sort of stuff? Not live or anything, but I, I love, uh, um, well, I never do, a, I never have a pedal to do it, but I like, I, I like when we're recording, like stacking a lot of guitars. Yeah. You know? yeah. Although the, this newest one, I'm a little bit less because I just, um, I think in the past I was doing it just to do it. Yeah. When it, you know, and it would actually make it sound like a little less like, the band you know um, yeah and uh but I, yeah. it's fun you know i think i would get a little carried away too because the last couple albums we made i did all the guitars at home just with nobody else there so i could do whatever i wanted yeah so and, you're like might as well man yeah you know and cool. you know, i'd be like i'm going you know i'd you know constantly kind of end up in the in the more in the on the brian may side of things where there's like 90 guitars or something there you go or uh, many, nickelback they use you know, like 100 different snares on their drums did they really wow. <laughs> yeah i've heard i know they use at least like 10 or 20 but <laughs> Good lord that's cool yeah i'm a big fan <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> it's cool stuff but uh thanks so everybody check out their music dope pod all right it's on Spotify, it's on Pandora Radio, it's on all that good stuff. So I say don't stream, download. Okay, that's my new oh, motto. Yeah. That's my new motto, saying it there all the time. So check them out. They're on Facebook and Twitter and where else? Instagram, where all you guys are at now. Do you have a TikTok? You know anything like that, like the new stuff? I'm not even exactly sure what that is. Okay. <laughs> Just stick with the main three, folks. That's what we're Yeah, saying. the big three. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it very much. New York State Music in Motion. We're going to have more episodes here coming soon. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching so much. Make sure you like and subscribe everything. And let us know your thoughts and tag the artists, okay? And uh, I'm sure Rob will get back to you if you guys got questions and stuff, you know? Never know. Cool. All right, guys. See you later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to all of our pages, NewYorkStateMusic.com. Stream and support.